Hey everybody, Dr. Jesse Morris here. Hey, today I wanna to teach you about how your spine and your brain communicate with each other. And I'm gonna use this funny analogy that when your spine isn't moving right or isn't working right, it's kinda of like it's drunk. So I'm gonna go out on a limb here and assume that the vast majority of people that are watching this video have had too much to drink at some point in their lives. So you know that experience, if you've had a few too many and everything just gets sloppy. Right, your movements get sloppy, your speech gets sloppy, your thinking gets sloppy. And so uh, alcohol essentially impairs a part of your brain called your cerebellum. Now your cerebellum is responsible for coordinating your movements. So turning muscles on and off in the right sequencing so all of your movements are smooth and pretty. So if we take a closer look at your spine, there's these layers of muscles along your spine that need to be coordinated. Right? They need to be turned on and off in the right sequencing so your spine moves in a smooth and coordinated way. Now, in order for your brain to coordinate your spine, it first needs to know where your spine is in space. So in the deepest layers of those muscles along your spine, there's these little tiny muscles that get stretched as your spine moves. And as those little muscles get stretched, they send a signal up to your brain telling your brain where your spine is in relation to the rest of the spine. So all the muscles, all the joints, your brain has this sense of where it is in space. Now, if your spine ends up getting stiff or stuck in some way, and those little muscles aren't getting stretched appropriately, your brain starts to have this kind of blurry picture of your spine, right? Starting to get a little tipsy and not quite know where things are in space. So when your brain essentially doesn't know where your spine is in space and can't coordinate uh, the movement of the spine appropriately, it's kind of like it gets drunk, right? And I, I really picture it this way. Imagine you're driving down the freeway and you can't quite tell where the guardrails are, right? So as you scrape the guardrails over and over, the sides of your car end up not looking so great. So the same thing happens with the spine, right? If your brain doesn't know where your spine is in space and your spine is scraping the guardrails over and over, it can kind of get beat up, right? And so that's why it's so important to have your spine moving appropriately so then your brain has an accurate picture of your spine and then can make it move in a really smooth, coordinated way and so it really keeps the spine from being injured, right? It really helps your spine move more like an athlete, right? Really coordinated and precise as opposed to moving like a drunken sailor. <laughs> so when you get adjusted, you know, adjustments stretch those little muscles closest to your spine and really help your brain have a more accurate picture of your spine so then it can move everything in a more smooth and coordinated way. So I, I had this, uh, you know, I was thinking about that, that communication of the brain to the spine. I had this kind of funny analogy that came up of, oh yeah, it's kind of like the spine gets drunk when it's not moving right and the cerebellum isn't able to coordinate the movement of the spine appropriately. So I wanted to share that with you. I hope it gives you some insight, a better understanding of how your brain and your spine communicate and why it's so important to keep your spine flexible and mobile throughout your life. Um, as always, feel free to share this with your friends and family, and I look forward to seeing you soon.